The grief of losing someone close, especially a parent, can hit young people especially hard. November is Children's Grief Awareness Month, and in Singapore, HCA Hospice helps some 150 children below 18 cope with this every year. And for more about this, we have Ko Yuti Umaira Kairia. She is a medical social worker, and Zura, a mother of three who sought help for her two school-going children to cope with their father's death. Welcome to both of you. Ms. Zura, let me begin with you. Can you please share your story with our viewers? Hi, good evening. My name is Noma Zura. I'm a mother of three kids, 16, 15, and six years old. I lost my husband in September 2019 due to esophagus cancer. So I have a challenge of three, three challenges to help my kids cope with loss of their dads. Ms. GC, we've just heard uh, that uh, brief account of that from Ms. Zura. Uh, if I count the years back, her children have been 12, 11 and 2 when they lost their father. Mm -hmm. So a father, to put it very crudely, serves many functions. Yes. So he doesn't just earn money for the family. He is there. He's a support for the mother. He is, he is a father in so very many ways. So when children lose a father at these very different ages of 12 all the way to 2, what causes the greatest grief? Um, actually, for children, um, the grief starts um, way before the death happens. It actually begins at the point when the parent is diagnosed with the illness and when the parent goes through um, treatment and when they experience physical deterioration up to the death and beyond. So studies have actually shown that um, when childhood grief is not being addressed, it may impact mental health in adulthood. So different children grief very differently depending on their age as well as their developmental stage. So um, some children struggle with understanding why the parent fell ill and eventually died, whereas others have difficulty coming to terms about the parent's death. For children, they may not have the words or the space to articulate their thoughts and their emotions. And therefore, um, their grief may be expressed through their behaviours. For example, some children become more withdrawn from social activities, while others, they tend to have more temper tantrum or they become easily irritable. Um, we have some children who share with us that they have sleep problems, they have difficulty falling asleep, or that they may have um, intense and scary nightmares that wake them up in the middle of the night. For younger children, uh, grief can be expressed through somatic symptoms such as having headaches or even stomach ache. And for the older children, um, they may have difficulty concentrating in school that may lead to a decline in their academic grades. Um, and therefore, it is very important for us adults to pay attention to children um, who are experiencing a loss. Mm. And uh, it is also important for us to create this network of care to support children who are grieving. And this could be informal support, such as uh, the extended family members, or even the school system, such as the school teachers and school counsellors. Yeah, they need a lot of support. Uh, Zura, your husband was ill and with cancer at that yeah. time. And, um, you know, Death is a, is a very traumatic and, and tragic event in, in a family's life. How did you cope with taking care of your children? How did you communicate uh, with them what was going on, being the different ages that they were? Oh, it's really tough. I take about a few months to come up from my own space. To, I have to grieve myself first before I go to them. But I can see my three kids with different, three different uh, personality. You can see to them already. My first one, he with autism, so he cannot express how he feelings. So he start to pull himself hair. So he become boxed. So that the way how he uh, want to show that his trauma, that losing his dad. Then for my second one, he show to anger. He studied drop. He quit soccer. He don't want to mix with friends. He very angry. The third one is very young, so he not not understand what happening. But 
asking where's daddy, where's daddy come back, yeah, it's not that. So I went to grief counseling for myself, then I put my kids. For my eldest one with autism, I asked help from the school teacher. Teacher helping me with do the book, scrapbook, picture book, so to tell him what happening to that. So through books, then we let him know. So he slowly he understand what happening. I seek help from doctor too due to the box that he having for too stress. Uh, he cannot voice out what happened inside his. Thank you, Zura. Uh, UT, in the case of Zura, she, you know, her children acted out in certain ways. I mean, they they coped in in the way that they could. Uh, you were saying before you were talking about that process. Should children be spared the details of right. of what has happened? I mean, what is the right course of action? Right. So. Many adults, they, they come from a good place of wanting to protect their child from the bad news of death and dying. And some adults um, themselves, they are grieving, that do not, they do not have the emotional capacity to attend to their child. Or some adults also had the uh, misconception that the child would not understand at all. However, um, from our work with the children, we have learned that um, when children are not given the factual information, they tend to make up stories by themselves which may not be um, helpful for the grieving process. Um, to share with you, um, we had a case of an eight-year-old boy. He had thought that he was the one who caused mom to fall ill and that his six-year-old sister was told by her friends that um, if she were to harm herself, mom would recover. Mm. Yeah, so um, the medical social worker as well as the art therapist, we roped in uh, our doctor and nurse to provide education for the children about mom's condition. And the father was invited into the session as well and um, so that he's kept aware of the children's grief. All right, yeah. all these tactics uh, that uh, Yu Ti has mentioned, uh, Ms. Zura, do you think, so explaining facts to your children, getting them to express, articulate, their emotions, different as they are, because they are different personalities. How has that actually helped you and your children? I suppose you can never get over a death, but you can live with it. Yes, correct. We that cannot over the deaths, but we live with it. I tell the truth what happens to my kids. So I put their deaths in our daily, daily routines. Like, you know, what's your dad like? Keep talking about them. No, even though daddy is not around, he will be us, yeah. So he will always be part of us. So always tell the truth about what is the good or bad. For me, don't, for me, don't stop talking about that. Just keep walking around, even though he's not in presence. Oh, thank you. It's, uh, thank you for sharing this story with us, Ms. Zura, mother of three. And of course, I wish you all the very best. And thank you too as well, Ms. Yuti Umara Hairia, medical social worker at HCA Hospice. Thank you both for coming and joining us, Ms. Yuti, and joining us on Zoom, Ms. Zura. Thank you.